Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Welcome to the fourth installment of our refactoring for solid compliance series. In this video, we will continue our exploration of open and closed principle refactoring from where we let off in the previous episode. If this is your first time tuning in, I highly recommend starting from the beginning of the series to fully grasp the context. For those who have been following along, thank you for your dedication. Let's dive in and complete the final steps to make our code OCP compliant. So we have now basically refactored salary manager, staff manager, engagement manager and staff. The next one is department. Once again, we have this type called as academic and non-academic. Instead of this, what I can do is I can create this abstract class called department and then there could be subclasses academic and non-academic and it will make it very easy for me to introduce any new departments. All I will have to do is just extend abstract department class. So this is how it would look. Next one is student. Here also the situation is pretty similar to department. There are so many different kinds of students and courses. So you have this undergraduate course, postgraduate course, PhD, postdoc. So it might be so many different kind of students itself. So it would be better to create a abstract class student which will have a function get course type of abstract function and then there could be multiple class implementations of this abstract class student and they will return a custom implementation of get course type. So if it is a PhD student, it will return a PhD. If it is a postdoc student, it will return a postdoc. And in case later future, uh, let's assume that we have exchange student. All that I will have to do is introduce another class which extends this abstract class student and course type would be exchange student. In this way, I am making it open for extension and closed for modification. I don't have to come and modify existing classes. That is the whole purpose of making these refactoring. Now that we have refactored all of these different classes, what happens to the college, which is our starting point of our application? So you can already see that a lot of things are breaking here because of the refactoring. Let's refactor this as well. Let it have these departments, staff, students, courses. I think we forgot to modify the course as well. Once again, we can do the same thing here. Instead of having just one single course, we can make an abstract class called course and then multiple courses, which basically extend this abstract class called course. Now going back here, let's start refactoring. Salary manager is not needed anymore. We will initialize these things much later. So let me make it a variable staff manager so that I can initialize it later. Let me add late in it. Student manager can also be a late in it variable and then engagement manager as well. We will keep it late in it where we need to initialize a map of different types of salary calculators depending upon academic or visiting we need to have a corresponding calculator and later point in time if you want to add more different kind of calculators it's just a matter of adding creating one more instance of that calculator and adding it here and then engagement strategies once that is done we can initialize the staff manager engagement manager and student manager. I think register student is required that will have to be done through the student manager assign staff to department will be required engage students. Yeah, through the student manager can be done now. So this is how the refactored code of college looks like it looks slightly different as expected. If you look at the overall class hierarchy, the new modified class hierarchy looks something like 
this. So now you have a department that has academic and non-academic student, multiple subclasses of the student courses, multiple subclasses of the courses, staff, different types of staff, calculator, different types of calculator that is salary calculator and engagement strategy to decide on what kind of new engagements that can be added. So the class hierarchy has now got introduced and now if you have a look at the class diagrams itself, it has become a bit even more complicated than what it was before. There are more subclasses and this is definitely more complicated than what was there earlier. But if you think about it now, what we have is almost around 20 eight classes there are around 22 classes two interfaces and four abstract classes in the earlier case here when we had completed the single responsibility principle if not wrong there were only around 10 classes including interfaces or abstract classes if there were we have now ended up with almost 28 classes so as we are refactoring the number of classes and interfaces are slowly increasing but we have been able to achieve ocp compliance now that we have successfully completed refactoring for ocp compliance let's discuss the common pattern that has emerged we started by abstracting the common behaviors as seen when we created abstract classes for staff department and other entities next we implemented specific variants of these classes we then refactored the existing classes to leverage these abstractions for instance various managers were simplified with some like salary manager being completely removed this promotes extensibility and reorganizes class hierarchies ensuring the code adheres to the open closed principle by being open for extension but closed for modification our code now becomes more maintainable and scalable the next part is how to refactor this code achieve compliance with third solid principle as well which is lisco substitution principle that is lsp that we shall see in the next that brings video. us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye